All right. I will just give it just a minute here. I just, you know, I, I thought about something, you know, as we were as we were in worship this morning about us, you know, us in, in what Deborah prophesied and and what Tina added, you know, the the the. the uh, I think the problem we all have um, that he wants us not to have is self-consciousness. You know, and I think that, you know, I, I, just, I just sensed, uh, you know, this morning I just thought about what it would be like, you know, when we, when we really come together and have lost all sense of self-consciousness, uh, along with that self-consciousness goes self-confidence and everything else that has to do with self, you know. That we that we come into that place, and I we, we I experienced it a little bit in Birmingham when we were out there. Uh, that the anointing, you know, brings in a glory where you get lost in His perfection. You know, you get lost in 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 the the, the perfect gift that's been given to us, and we come into that rest, and we get arrested in His rest, and then we start losing. It, it, when you get caught in that, you lose your sense of you. And you and you gain everything that's of him, his identity and his purpose in our lives, and and I just you know I just I was just praying, Lord, let us come together uh, in that way. When, every time we meet together, that we would, as we go into worship, to praise and worship, that we would we would lose that sense of self, um, that we would really be in a position to just you know to receive his love, the, the perfect love, to realize there's nothing we can do. Except receive, um, and that that in in those in that that place there is just, I think a, a, a an atmosphere in which we become a sponges that can uh, can take in what he really wants to give. He wants to give so much more than we're even able to take, and, and we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. Um, Good morning, Mary and Susan. Hey, uh, it's good to see y'all. I see some pictures, but I only see a couple of comments so far. So is, uh, is the volume okay? Can somebody give me a mic check? We're we doing okay on that. I want to make sure we're in the loud version instead of the, the one where we try to pick up through the little hole in the side of the phone. Because it sounds like I'm in a well when that happened. Sounds good? Okay, awesome. Um, we're, we're talking this morning, the, the title that, that I came up with, that I came, I came up with, that he came, that he gave me was a living, I need to, I need to lose myself this morning, <laughs> a, a living hope, a living hope, and that's what we have. Uh, before we get started, I, I, I see that there's Zach, good morning Zach and Rana, good to see you, um, and uh, whoever else is there. Uh, Wayne is, Wayne is, uh, is having a uh, hernia repair surgery tomorrow at noon in Corpus Christi. And so I got a text from Susan that they wanted us to pray for him. And so, Lord, we just lift up Wayne this morning and, and we just ask you um, that you would, that you would uh, keep him in a perfect position in your hands that, that, that this surgery would be, would be uh, taken care of in, a, in such a way that there would be per- perfection all the way around with the doctors, what they're doing, with the healing, what needs to happen there, the, the perfect outcome in every way. And I'm just thinking, you know, he's also suffering with, with a, something that's called Graves' disease. And I was just thinking, you know, Jesus came out of the grave to take care of every disease as a result of the grave. And he took our sins and, and our sicknesses and our infirmities and all that with him. And so we just... We just pray for Wayne uh, this morning and just ask that, it, that there would be perfect rest and peace on him as he goes through this process and that you would uh, even lead them to the best fishing spots there that they're looking for in Corpus, in Corpus Christi. And, and, and we just th- we thank you for continuing to be with, with Rana as she's developing a, a healing in, with, with this situation that she's dealing with. We just thank you for completing that healing, completing that work that you're starting in her, that you're going you're gonna to bring it to fruition. And, and whoever else has a need this morning, we just thank you for, for uh, continuing to, to be with Kim as she's, as she's healing. And, and Lord, that there would be perfect, perfect outcome according to your grace in our lives. And we just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Uh, I know Susan mentioned about missing our worship too, and so we, we may try to figure out a way to, to include that uh, in, 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 the, in the future here. So we're going to see, see what we can do because I know some people would love to be a part of that as well. I know we did that with your sisters uh, there in the hospital that time. Uh, pardon? Homegoing. Homegoing. She was in her homegoing party in the hospital, and we were there with her singing and worshiping. And, and uh, so with that, I, we'll, we'll work on how we can you know, bring that into the process as well. Uh, if, if you would this morning, turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, also, they said to please give their love to this to the to the group. They really miss miss being here, and we miss them being here. So, uh, for anybody who can't be here, we're very thankful that you can be you can still be here uh, with us. And uh, I see Crystal's picture up there. I think that's Crystal. And, mm-hmm. Okay. So, good morning to everyone. We just hope that this this word. We just thank you, Lord, for this word be, being being light to us, to our hearts, to bring us revelation of the finished work of Jesus Christ, uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, so in, in last week, if you didn't get to listen to last week, you almost kind of have to go back and listen to it because we laid a foundation on which we're kind of building this week with the remainder of chapter 10. And it had, you know, of course, it had to do with, with a common uh, area of, that the Lord has had me dealing with, and that's the, the unity, the triunity, the, the unity of the Trinity. Uh, and how they all had a place and a purpose and a desire that that they're all three involved in our salvation, not only in, in causing it to be possible and to happen, but to cause it to generate in us a life that Jesus said he wanted to give us, which was a life more abundantly. He didn't come for us to just, just to have a... Uh, it's kind of like, oh, okay, we're just getting through here so we can go there. He wanted us to have a life more abundantly because in, in that way, we actually fulfill his prayer in John 17 where people in the world will see how much he loves us by what effect it has on us, not only in our lives but in our lives together, how we, how we live together with, with one another and the love that the world sees expressed. You know... Um, if we can, you know, the Lord has been just, you know, stopping me to think about, I know what Deborah was saying there about uh, what we were talking about before before service where, you know, if we ever thought, you know, what success is measured by in this world. You know, J- Jesus said, love not the world nor the things in the world. He's not talking about what he created. He's talking about the world system of achievement and success and trying to outdo somebody else. Everything, even from the youngest now, our kids, they don't even have a chance to go to elementary school and play kickball. They're already in, in these leagues to learn how to be the be- better soccer player or the better basket. There's so much pressure put on kids to succeed. Succeed. We're not even letting them be kids anymore. Uh, but if they would know who they are in Christ, then whatever they were doing, or whatever gifts that God gave them, they would, they would be successful in them in a way that would glorify Him. Tim, Tim Tebow was who she was talking about yeah. earlier. But just that, that you know that they would have an opportunity. But, you know, if, if we ever thought that there'd be a, t- you know, a, come a time in society where we'd say, now I want you to take this little stick and we're going to wrap this little, this, this cork up and we're going to put it in and wrap it and sew it together. And I want you to, I'm going to throw this ball at you and you're going to hit a, hit the, hit it with this stick and I'm going to pay you $35 million to do that. <laughs> what we would think, uh, is you know, but that's that's where success is measured. I'm, I can hit it further. I can hit it more often. I can throw better. I, whatever, play basketball better. And so it's easy to get caught up in that, yeah. um, and to make that the source. So that the world is just you know, they couldn't pay those people thirty five million if it wasn't that the world was so sucked into that system that they will watch. I remember that Wells revival back uh, in uh, early nineteen hundreds where they had such an out, outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the country uh, that, that it, the, the, the Super Bowl that they had in soccer, just nobody showed up for it. It's because they had other things that were capturing their heart and their mind during that period of time. And so anyway, I just, I just think that it's uh, this glory that, that you know, he wants us to live in, um, this hope, this faith, hope, and love that he's left us with is just such a beautiful thing. Um, 
So in, in, uh, we're going we're gonna to continue with Hebrews. We left off with verse 22 last week. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit all, all have uh, such, a, such a, an, an, an input into what, what He's given us, this gift of eternal life and, and their purpose, all three of their purposes in our life. To finish that, the fulfillment of that, and the perfection of that, not only, not just the fact that we have been given the perfect gift, but that it, would, that it would express itself perfectly in our life. That we would express, you know, just like Jesus was the express image of, of, the, of His person, of God, that we would be an express image that the world would see in us, that because it's the same, it's the same Jesus in us, we're united one spirit with Him, one, one bone of His bone, flesh of His flesh. So the Father's desire, the Holy Spirit's desire, the Son's desire is that we would express perfectly what we are, who we are. And that's the perfect likeness and impression of Him. The old man is dead. The new man, which is the, the new spirit man in Christ, is the one that's alive today. And that's the one that Paul was focused on. What she, what Deborah prophesied, we'll, you'll know at the end, you'll catch it at the end, what it was the perfect lead-in to what, what uh, we're going to finish up with this morning. So, uh, um, now, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, uh, says, says so, so now, everybody say now, now, wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps His promises. Amen. Always, always. keeps His promises. So, that wrap your heart is really kind of an expression of what faith is. Faith is wrapping our heart around the truth. You know, if faith, if faith is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the unveiling of Jesus. And it becomes a reality to us through the process of His faith. Uh, he, he authoring the faith in us and, and then the process of finishing it is to unveil more and more uh, of himself to us, and then we wrapping our heart more and more tightly around the reality of that truth, uh, and that's the process of that working. What's in already out the working out of our salvation is that process. Amen. Uh, so, what kind of hope do we have? What 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 kind of hope does it? Do we have the hope that the world? When, when we'd say hope to the world, they're saying, well, hope. I hope so. But there's no, there's no reality to it. It's, it's, a, it's a grasping for wind, really, in, in most cases. It's like, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm, you know, but I don't have any real confidence. And so we can get, we can get caught up um, in this. Um, I, didn't put, I didn't take my phone off of, uh, of the do not. I got a text there, so I hope that didn't come through on him. Uh, it's like a picture of my grandson, so that's okay. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, so this, this hope that we have now is called a living hope. A living hope. Our hope is a person and he's alive and he's in us. And because he's in us, there is, an, there is a hope that, that it cannot, it cannot help but come to pass. And that's a hope that, um, that's connected to faith in the, t in, the, in the realm that we're living in now because love is the one thing that will abide when faith and hope are fully realized, when we're face to face with Him, then the only thing left will be what's, what, what was started with. It started with love and it's going to end with love. It's His perfect love and that's what's casting out our, all, all the fear in, in the time of this where hope and faith or are, 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 are grace and hope and faith are aligning to bring us into the promised, uh, prom the promises, which uh, every promise in, in uh, there's 7,000 of them in the Word, but every promise is yes amen. and amen. Where? In him. in him, in Christ. So Jesus is the yes, and our part is just the amen. You know, uh, uh, because we're, like Tina was saying, we don't, we don't add anything, so we can't take anything away from the promise. We don't, we don't make the promise happen because it's not because of us. It's not because of what we do. It's because of what He did. So uh, there, that's a promise that, I can, that we can sink our spiritual teeth into because it's, it, it's enduring 
uh, it's actually, it's actually that promise, that hope is actually living in us now. And so it will come to pass. And so that's the hope we have. And I, I put a verse here, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. Uh, and I, we actually used this last week as well, but I just thought it was worth repeating. Uh, if you read along with me there, it's the Passion Translation. Good morning. Good morning, Samuel. I know he's getting ready to preach his own message out in California, but he gets to join us for a little, a little bit before. Um, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 uh, through 4, it says, You are not forgotten. Sometimes, you know, uh, we, 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 we'd love, the enemy would love to give us a sense of, of being abandoned yeah. and forgotten. Yeah. And where, are, where is the promise of His coming? And where is the promise of this? And where is the promise of that and all? But you're not forgotten. Uh, how can He forget who He's living in? Amen. And that's the realization that bre- that's going to bring these promises to, to pass. Uh, for you have been chosen and destined by Father God. There's the Father. Uh, the Holy Spirit, there's the Holy Spirit, has set you apart to be God's holy ones, obedient followers of Jesus Christ. There's the Son, who have been gloriously sprinkled with His blood. So you've got the work of the Son, the, the, the will of the Father, and the witness of the Spirit. May God's delightful grace and peace cascade over you many times over. Celebrate with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has shown us His extravagant mercy. For His fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn to what? Experience Experience a living, energetic hope. Because see, he's the, he is our life now. I'm not, you know, like Paul said in, in Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I that live, but Christ is living in me. He wants to express his life out of me now, as that I'm, that I'm dead um, and that he's alive now in me. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. That's what, again, what Tina was saying. Uh, um, it is promised. Everybody say, it's, it, is promised. it is promised. And preserved forever. So every promise will, it will, it will have a fulfillment because it's all, it, they're already all reserved. But He would love for us to, have, to, to, to sit down at the table with the reservations He's given us and order. Not, I don't mean order from like the menu is the, the menu uh, is th- th- is available to us uh, to, to 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 talk to him about the inheritance and the identity that we through, through the identity we have. Uh, it pr- pr- uh, provide preserve forever in the heavenly realm for you. Amen. I put a couple of uh, look at Colossians real quick. I ran out of page, so I don't have enough, didn't have enough page to print it. Mm-hmm. Colossians um, chapter three. I like for you to read this yourself. And again, if you're reading the Passion translation, then you know put the put the scripture numbers out beside it so you can read them from then on. Colossians chapter 3, see what verse 1 says? Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. This is why we are, we, we are to what? Yearn. Yearn for all that's above. That's where, just said, we just read, that's where our inheritance is preserved already. We're, we're living there and His desire is for us to yearn for everything that's there that's ours. And to quit worrying about what we try to attain or succeed at here. Everybody with me? Uh, for that's, that's where Christ sits enthroned at the place of all power, honor, and authority. Yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly... Realities. Yeah. Well, in, in the Passion it says realities. Uh, it may be in... I, I, maybe, I don't know if all the translations are exactly the same, but this, this 2020 version... And not with the distractions of the natural realm. Amen? Amen. Uh, he doesn't want us to be d- distracted in our life here. He wants us to be at rest, be arrested and be uh, in His rest. Um, 
Now, in second, uh, in the other one is Romans 8. And this one you better, you, you probably already know, but it doesn't hurt to look at it again, does it? Does it ever hurt to look at spiritual truth when it witnesses by the Holy Spirit in our heart, in our hearts, because the Holy Spirit's job is to shed the love of God ab abroad in our hearts. That's His number one job f to, uh, to us or, or in us is that, the, 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 that the, the love of the Father would be shed abroad in our hearts. A perfect love for us that's ir irregardless of our behavior, our perfection, or anything that we would bring to the table. Isn't it nice that the table's already filled with everything that's in, that, there, that really has any value to consume? We don't have to bring, like, you know, like a smorgasbord or a family where everybody brings their own little... It's already there. We're, in fact, we're going to have a feast at some point that's going to last seven years, so that's going to be a pretty good meal. I'm ready for that one. He's already paid for our buffet. The buffet is already, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was buffeted for our buffet. All right? Everybody say, everybody say amen. 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 Where are we? Romans 8. Romans 8. 8 verse 14. Um, the mature children of God are those... Now, th th I want to be. I don't want to live as a baby all my life. I can be a baby born again, born anew, and I'm, I'm going to go. I've got an inheritance forever, but I don't want to live. I want to live in spiritual maturity. I want to live in a in a place where we have, uh, we've grown to understand our inheritance. Amen. So, uh, are those who move are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit? And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance. As Deborah said, you know, see, we're fully accepted in the beloved. Full acceptance. Uh, enfolding you into the family of God. We are enfolded into one family, the, the family of God. God is our Father, our older brother is Jesus Christ. Uh, and you will, you will never feel orphaned. See, that's the, that's the Holy Spirit's desire and job is that we would never feel, even though sometimes the enemy would try to tempt us to feel that way. For as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the word of tender affection, Beloved Father, Abba, Daddy, is really what the, the, what the true language Aramaic says. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he... And, now notice that the Holy Spirit's whispering. He's not going to yell at us. So our, our hearts have to be tuned to truth and to this hope. Uh, for indeed, we are heirs of God Himself. Uh, and since we are His true children, we, are, we, we qualify to share all of His treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God Himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that He is and all that He has. We will, and this is where the key is, experience being co-glorified with Him, provided that we accept His sufferings as our own. So His sufferings are the source of my blessing. It's not about my suffering. It's about His suffering. And my blessing is coming out of what He suffered to give me. What a glorious inheritance we have. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 1, third section of your notes. What time is it? Okay. Uh, chapter 1, verse 12. This is the New, new uh, King James Version. For I know what I have believed. Oh, no, wait a minute. What does it say? I know whom... I have believed, and I'm persuaded, this is Paul telling his son in the faith, I'm persuaded that he is able to, to keep what I've committed to him until that day. And it, we're going to see this, this day uh, here. We're going to talk about this a little bit. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you've heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Where does the Holy Spirit dwell? Yes. Are you a temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. So you are a holy of holies. And everywhere you go, you take the holy of holies with you. So what good thing, um, that good thing that Paul committed to, to Timothy, what was that good thing? The good news of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first, also to the Greek, because in it 
the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So the good thing that he gave to Timothy was what, he, what, what Jesus personally gave him, and that's the good news, of, and the gospel, and the power, the truth, and the power that goes along with that truth. And he says, that's what I want you to keep, and it takes the Holy Spirit to keep it. You have to have the Holy Spirit, first of all, to understand the gospel, but you have to have the Holy Spirit's whispering to your heart continually to keep that good thing. Because what does the enemy want to take from us? This good thing. He wants to take away the truth of the gospel. He wants to pervert it. He wants to add to it. He wants to take away from it. He wants to do anything he can to, 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 to diminish the purity of it. Amen? And so the Holy Spirit is, is, is always trying to help us keep the simplicity and the purity of the message of the gospel. Because there is no, there is no hope, there is no faith, there is no love, there's no, there's no peace apart from this, the simplicity of this, this message that is forever settled in the heavens. It's, forever, it's, it's a forever settled thing. And, and, and in the same letters uh, to Timothy and Titus, he said that it's, that it's God's will that no man perish, but that would all come to the knowledge of the truth. He's not, it's not His will that any should perish. And so that's why the good news is so important to keep good and to keep pure. Because nobody, if they're not hearing the good news, how can they, uh, how can they apply it to themselves in their heart and receive it uh, it, and then fulfill that, the, the purpose of what, why it was given. If we're, if we're not giving the purity of the message, then how, how are they gonna, how's it going to be uh, received? Uh, if we're putting all the catches and the what-ifs and the buts and the ands and the therefores and adding all that stuff to something that's, that there's nothing we can add to, that's why, it's so, that's why I said the Holy Spirit is going to help you keep this thing, this good news of the gospel. Uh, and here, look at this. And this is in the Amplified Version of John. Uh, we're going we're to start looking at John quite a bit. But I just uh, John's Gospel is different. It's not like the three synoptic Gospels. John is, his name means... Grace. So John is, John's Gospel is, is nothing but Jesus front to back, front to finish, first to the last sentence. Um, and it's all about... It's, it's all about this gospel. It's all about the good news. He's the only one that really mentions the new, the new birth. John is the only gospel that talks about being born again. Uh, because, they, you know, they couldn't understand that pre-cross. They, they, you know, like, what? You know. Uh, so, this, this John chapter 1, verse 16 out of the Amplified, it says, For out of His fullness, His abundance, we have all received had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing and even favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. That's a, pr that's a pretty, that sounds like good news to me. I don't know. What do, do y'all think? Can I get a good amen? amen. That's good news. And, and the, good, the best news about it is it has nothing to do with me. And the, reason, and the reason I say that in this particular location is because that's what John goes on to say right here. For a while, um, while the law was given through Moses, grace, unearned, which is unearned, undeserved, favor, and spiritual blessing, and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, this is what he spoke to me, and I wrote it down. Uh, based upon this, because this is what makes the good news so good, is that the, the law will always demand more than you can give. Just when you think, I'm getting close, it'll always give you more demand. It'll always give you more demand than, than you can, can give, or supply, or do. That's, that's the, 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 the curse of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The devil's lie was you can be like God, apart from God. And how does man try to be like God apart from God? By trying to be good enough. 
trying to be righteous enough. But the problem is, apart from God, Jesus said, apart from me, you can do no thing, right? No thing. <laughs> no thing. That came, that's that's the, the Tina revised version. I like it. Okay? So that's the way the law works now. So you, you might as well give, give up. That's good advice. Give it up. You might as well give it up. Just go ahead and give in. <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead. Just go ahead. <laughs> just go ahead and give in and give up so that you can give out. Amen. All right? That's what happened to me uh, in uh, 2007, February of 2007, is that I gave up. And that's when he came in with the, with the good news of the gospel. I'd heard it. I was born again. But I was taught out of it. I was taught out of my inheritance and given. Uh, I was taking back to a, a, the wrong mountain and the wrong tree. And I lived, it, I lived in that uh, free and not knowing it for 40 years of my Christian life. Maybe 39 and a half. I think the first six months I, uh, I probably enjoyed his love. And Oh, I'm sorry. And I was just going to say, you know, sometimes we have to... I thought she was praising the Lord. <laughs> But sometimes you have to come to that place where your self-effort is exhausted. Self-effort is exhausted. Yes. I like the name of that book. You know, I tried till I almost died. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good book title. Yeah. But the, the problem is that is why the law was given at Mount Sinai. See, they had, they'd eaten from the law of the, tr the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but they didn't understand what was going on. And then the law came to, 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 to say, look, you got a problem. And there's only one solution, and that's my son. Uh, so, but I, I, you know, God, God, everything He did, He did in love, because He wanted the outcome to be that they would eat from the tree of, the, of life. Jesus had to die to, to make our way back to that tree of life, but it, nevertheless, that was the that was the plan from the from the even before the man failed in the garden. You know, I heard somebody say actually, very simplistic. But I mean, I guess it rang true with me. But they said, if the law was able to redeem us, don't you think we would have done it by now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that's that's an excellent point. If 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 the, if the law could redeem us, don't you think we would have been there by now? We we'd have done it by now. It, it's but that was the that's the the folly, and that was the necessity to make it clear on God's part, the re, the righteous requirement of the law was beyond our capacity. Because the demand system is always going to demand more than you can give. Because apart from God, we, we lost our power anyway, where there was no connection uh, to, 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 to be in that position. So on the, con on the contrary side, or on the good side, the gospel side, the gospel of grace will always supply more than you can take. More than you can receive, or according to the apostle Paul, the... the, the well, uh, uh, Paul said a good thing. His, his word was good. But the, according to the Apostle Paul, more than we can even imagine. Now, that's, that's a pretty good uh, inheritance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But he wants us to imagine. But it says we, we, we don't, we, now we understand. It says that, that the Holy Spirit is giving us insight to this. Uh, but now, see, because see, now Jesus is the supply. Jesus is the supply of grace. We were the supply uh, and, and the workhorse of, under the law. I don't, I don't, that, that's not even a fair trade to even look at. So Jesus is the supply. He is the substance of everything we could ever hope for. He is the substance. And that we're going to lead into that next week with what faith is, the substance of things hoped for. First, first verse of chapter 13 of, Hebrew, of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Jesus is that substance of the things that we hope for. Uh, the evidence is not seen if it's still hope, but He doesn't want us to stop with what we can't see. He wants the hope to be realized. That's what we're talking about because He's the living hope that gives us the promise and the answer to the promise, the supply of the promise. So don't ever think you can out-receive His grace. Don't think, you know, we, we, we grew up in a culture where receiving was, was an awkward thing 
that we learned, you know, that we shouldn't, you know, oh, I, I don't, you know, no, I don't, 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 don't give me that. I don't really deserve that. Well, in the, in, the, in the scope of things in this world system, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve anything. So we have to change our mind, which is called repentance, metanoia. We need to change our mind because this is the only, the only way uh, that was established in the new covenant and the new way of living and believing and thinking was to constantly receive, constantly what you said, John 15, he said, you must continually let my love nourish your heart. And you can't, you, you can't continually do that until, unless the Holy Spirit is continually whispering to you about receiving everything Jesus has given to us. It's yours. It's, it's, it's ours for the, for the... It's not ours for the earning. It's ours for the receiving. It's for the taking. Uh, and... Um, so, um, now let's go on and back to Hebrews. We're going to finish up here. There's, there's a couple things I want to... Is everybody, on, everybody with me here? Yes. Uh, I just felt like that this, this fullness of His fullness, we've, we've received His fullness, all of us. We are complete in Him. Uh, and so, um, the, best, the, the greatest blessing and joy we can give to the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit is to receive what was paid for by the precious blood of Jesus. That's the, we think it's, we think we don't, well, we don't, we don't really deserve it. We don't, the, that's the point. But because He made it available to us, it's, it's really, and this is what the next section of Hebrews is about, section 10, is about insulting the Spirit of grace by rejecting the gospel. In fact, I've got to get my New King James Version here if it won't fall apart. Uh, Hebrews, we're going to go now, we're going to talk about this related to the rest of Hebrews, Hebrews 10. Uh, everybody with me? Yes. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And He wants us to be strengthened with might on the inner man that we would know the fellowship of His sufferings, what that suffering gave us. And to, to, you know, to, to, to walk in that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got ahead. One verse ahead. Verse 25 says, uh, Not forsaking the assembling of, of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Uh, I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a scripture, Matthew 24, 14, in the Amplified Version, in your notes there, printed in your notes, because the last thing that Jesus said was going to happen at the last, in the last day, days leading up to the day of the Lord was, was that the gospel of the kingdom, and in the Amplified it says grace. That's why I love that translation. I put Amplified in your notes. When you read that the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace shall be preached to all the world as a witness. And then the end, this is what he says after he talks about wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes and pestilences and the sea, tsunamis, all this stuff. After that, which he said are just the beginning, just the birth pains, but it's also those things are happening to show us what day we're in. Uh, but the, the thing he says is that this, go this gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace shall be preached to all the world as a witness. And then the end shall come. So we're living in a day that's the day of the Lord is what we're leading up to. And so we're in, we're in, a, we're, we're in a remnant right now. We're in a remnant of those people that, are, that, that are truly under, know and understand and are living in the truth of the gospel. The, the, God, that gospel. There's only Jesus, uh, Paul said... Uh, he said you, you, to the Galatians, you're preaching another gospel, which, isn't, which is not a gospel. He says, that's not even a gospel. And you're preaching it as if it is a gospel about, about going back to works. But he said, it, th there's only one gospel. And that's the gospel truth that he preached. And he said, he was so upset about the, messing it up that he said, if anybody, even an angel, if an angel from heaven comes and preaches a different one, let him be anathema. 
uh, don't listen to them. Don't give them. Don't give any heed to it. But unfortunately, the church has you know been you know it's been sown, and and we're now we're coming out of that. So we're in the day, and I think that part of the reason why he, he's exhorting us is because there is a remnant that's going to have an that's going to have an opportunity to be a blessing to the world in a way that the ones that that that. You know, I was talking to Deborah whether or not to even mention this or not, but I've always been confused about the parable of the of the the um, the uh, the oil and the lamps, uh, yeah. the virgins, the ten virgins. Right. Uh, they were all virgins, but some of them allowed the oil to, to diminish in their lamps. Yeah. Right. So that didn't mean that they were outcasts. They're, they're, they're saved. They're going to heaven. But I think the, the only thing as the, as the Holy Spirit was ministering about this message was that I, could, that I could really, that seemed to fit was what he says right here. As you see the day approaching, don't let that anointing, don't let that anointing oil leak out. And I'm telling you, when you're not in fellowship in the, in the body of Christ with other believers... I, 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 when I go two weeks, I, I, I feel it when, when, we don't, when we don't meet on a weekly basis. And he says, and he goes on to say that after this. He says he, he should be getting together even more as the day approaches uh, because it's going to be so important to live with that oil in your lamp. This oil, this, see, this is, the, this is the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit that causes the, 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 uh, the life the anointing that runs down from the high, high priest head over the body and over the, the priesthood. We are the priesthood of the new covenant. It, it, we, need that, we need that anointing uh, to, and to stay trimmed because there's going to be times that are approaching as the day of the Lord comes near, nearer that I think there's going to be things that, that come out and meet the bridegroom, it says, in that, in that parable. Um, and and I want to I want to meet the bridegroom in a way that I'm demonstrating to the world the truth of this gospel. But if I don't if I just if I if I don't if I let this all if I if I don't and, and, and don't don't quote me on this I don't send me emails or whatever because I'm not saying that's the God you know it's it's the absolute truth. But I, I I I think this this seems to appropriate more with the fact that they're all virgins, they're all pure 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 in the body of Christ. But it's going to be important to keep that oil because I can't give somebody else in that moment when I when there's when we're in, when we're, we're we're meeting him in a way that's supplying this gospel to the world. Some the others may come back and start trying to gain from us what we've spent years and years trying to to understand about the truth. And you can't it doesn't it it can happen the 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 gospel can happen immediately. But we meet together every week just like Paul did with him, and he ex told the church to because it takes that weekly, it takes growing in the grace of knowledge of the Lord to, to be mature in our understanding. To, to, to understand righteousness, you have to hear this and hear this. It's the hearing of faith. It's the hearing that produces even the signs and wonders and miracles that the Galatians, he said, those miracles, did they come by the works of the law or did they come by the hearing of faith? Well, we're going to hear faith. As long as we're meeting together, we're going to hear about Jesus. Uh, and that's where the opportunity for anything to happen powerfully is going to happen through that. So I think he's saying, and not only that, but the word in the Aramaic says that discouragement. Isolation is the enemy's way of getting, getting a person discouraged and then not, not participating any longer. I've seen, uh, and Rob Rufus could testify to this, he has many times in, in Hong Kong, that this pandemic was the enemy was was trying to get people to detach. He he really wanted the, the church to detach, and uh, and we're and we're saying no to that. You know, it's it's not going to happen, and it's and it, it will will continue to under any time there was a pressure in the in the in the book of Acts day, it was always uh, something greater that happened. I've got to got to go on here. Everybody see that? Yep. As you see the day approaching, I think it's going to be so much more important. Now. For if we sin uh, willingly after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. I used to not even ever read this verse. How many sins, as far as behavior, are willing willingly done? Aww. Every one of them. So if that if what he's saying is that you, if you sin after you've come to the knowledge of the truth. 
I'm, I'm sorry, but you're it's done. You know, you're uh, toast. you're toast, <laughs> and not and, and pretty overdone toast. Uh, but so that's if you look at the New King James, if you have the Open Bible, anybody have an Open Bible? I know Pat's got one there. Um, it, in the bottom under the in the little margin there, it explains sin sin willfully. Okay, y'all got this? Persistent, deliberate rejection of the gospel. Persistent, deliberate rejection of the gospel. That is sinning willfully. Because how many sins are left in the world? One, unbelief. Every other sin, behold the Lamb of God, He took them all. He took them all away. So there is one left. And I'm going to show you what I mean by this. We've got just a few minutes to go here. No, we're in uh, Hebrews 10.24. Hebrews 10.26. Is that not 24? I see that. Okay. The one you just read was 26. Yes. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, the 10.26 is next to the last section of your notes. Now we're going to back up to Acts because I want to go to two places and I got them out of order, but that's okay. Can I? But I'm glad he's not taking our sins and my, my no, mistakes into... Nothing changes. Uh, Acts chap- Let's go to Acts chapter 3 because I want to... You can read the rest of this chapter 10 or we can read Acts and it'll tell you why the rest of chapter 10 is written. How about that? You want to do that? Okay. Let's go to Acts chapter 3 first. Some say this was the Acts of the Apostles, but I think it was also the Acts of the Holy Spirit. That's what I, I think would be the, what they would agree to say about this. Uh, now, uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, uh, Peter is, is preaching and he, and he says, And he will send you Jesus, the Messiah, the appointed one, for he must remain in heaven until the restoration of all things has taken place fulfilling everything that God said long ago through His holy prophets. So, Jesus is, is at the right hand of the Father, but He's not going to stay there permanently. But He's staying there until all of the prophecy regarding which the, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of all prophecy. So every one of these prophecies is going to come to pass, including this day of the Lord that's building up, that we're living in. Um, and then he, he goes on to say in that... Um, about times of refreshing. In the meantime, times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord is, is what He's given to us. Uh, in the interim period bet- between the time Jesus comes out of that position in heaven and comes back to, to, to get, uh, get His bride and then comes eventually back to the earth, uh, there is, there's times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord that He wants us to, uh, to, to enjoy and live in. And that's why... Read the context of that. I'm running out of time this morning. But read the context of that because there's a real uh, explanation of... Uh, Deborah and I were talking this morning. I, I, I look back in all the, all the times of refreshing and the, the experiences I've had by the Holy Spirit are, are, all serve a purpose in, give, in, in wetting our appetite, so to speak, for continued hope in the promises and and every time you every time we have an experience in in God that, that that goes beyond just what we know from reading or understanding the Word, but actually has a demonstration of power in our lives, like what happened in Birmingham, what happened in you know during the revival of the laughter, and what happened when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus is our, he's our Savior, our Healer, our Baptizer in the Holy Spirit, and our soon coming King. So we're living in the, in the shadows of that fourth promise of, of, the, of the things that Jesus is in our life. And so in the meantime, we're going to have these times of refreshing that are so important to enjoy to keep us anchored and keep us going forward with expectation. Amen? Amen? So uh, now flip over to, to Acts chapter 28. The day of the Lord is we're living in, folks, we're living in the day of the Lord and I, I can't tell you how close I believe we really are to um, not just escaping 
but changing the world with the truth of the gospel. My life was impacted in a way I could never explain when I knew the gospel, when I finally knew the gospel of grace. Amen? Mm-hmm. Every one of us has been changed by the, the, by the power of the gospel. Right? I'm not, I'm not the person I was. Um, and I, I, I wasn't anyway, but I didn't know it. See, I, I, you shall know the truth, and then the truth will set you free. Set you free. It'll, it'll, not only it'll set you free, but then it'll make you free. It'll make you being freer and freer and freer uh, to this present day. Acts, Acts chapter 28. Uh, read this sometime when you, when you can reach the, read the whole thing. But this, this was a period when, when Paul was basically finished with his full-time traveling ministry, and he was in house arrest. For two years, he didn't. He wasn't. A, he wasn't a big church pastor. He wasn't. He was living in a rent house, and people were coming to his door for the last two years of Paul's life. This is this was his ministry. They were coming to his door. Hey, I heard about that. I heard about that, Paul. I'm gonna, I'm going to go to Paul's house. Uh, some people are going to start coming to Paul's house over here, but um, they're going to. They they want to hear this. And so what what happened? And this is the answer to this question about the warnings of Hebrews chapter 10. Everybody, everybody with me on this so far? Uh, starting with about, uh, let's see, 23. So, so the, Jew, the Jews wanted to go and talk to Paul at, this, at his house. And so there was a day that was set up. So they set a time to meet with Paul. And on that day, an even greater crowd gathered than, than, than uh, where he was staying at this house. From morning... Until evening, Paul taught them, opening up the truths of God's kingdom. With convincing arguments from both the law and the prophets, he tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some were converted. See, some of them believed. See, that's, that's, that's what he's saying, sinning willfully. These, these others that weren't believing were sinning willfully. They were being, they had the... Um, with the conviction of the Holy Spirit on their hearts while Paul was preaching. All you have to do is, is believe and re- then you can receive His righteousness. Everybody with me? So they, some were converted, but others refused to believe. See, persistent refusal, refusal to believe the gospel. That's, what's, that, that's what Hebrews means by sinning willfully. Y'all got that? These, these people were sinning willfully because they were, they were actually... Uh, bl- uh, Blaspheming the Holy Spirit, they were, they were, they were. Uh, the Spirit of Grace was being, you know, was being ignored. The Holy Spirit. Uh, they argued back and forth, still unable to agree among themselves. They were about to leave when Paul made him say, "Hey, wait, hey, hold up." That's where this expression "hold up" came from. It was this right here out of Acts chapter? That's the whole expression of "hold up." So if you hear that, you'll know this where it came from. He made one last statement to them. The Holy Spirit stated it well when He spoke to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah. I send you this to, the, to this people to say to them, you will keep learning but not understanding. You will keep staring at the truth but not perceiving it. For your hearts are hard and insensitive to me. You must be hard of hearing for you, you've closed your eyes so that you won't be troubled by the truth. And, you, and, and you've cover, cover, uh, covered your ears so that you won't have to listen and be pierced by what I have to say. But what a joy when your heart is pierced by the word of righteousness. Amen. Uh, for then you, would have to re- then you would have to respond and repent. You'd have to change your mind so that I could heal your hearts. I can't heal your inside until you say yes. So listen well. This wonderful salvation given by God is now being presented to the non-Jewish nations and they will believe and receive it. And did I hear a good? Amen. Everybody in this room is a recipient of this word of Paul right here. They will receive it. Paul lived two more years in Rome in his own rented quarters, welcoming all who came to visit. He continued to proclaim to all the, uh, to all the truths of God's kingdom realm, teaching them about the Lord Jesus, the anointed one, speaking triumphantly and without any restriction. What a joy. And so... Based upon what Deborah prophesied about what we have, our, our, uh, 
uh, the one thing Paul said that was going to be given to him based upon his, he says, I've, I've, I've run a good race, I've fought a good fight, and now it's going to be given to me a crown of righteousness. And that crown is what we cast at Jesus' feet. There's nothing else that we have except what He's given us through this crown of righteousness that He's given to us. And so uh, this crown of life uh, is this life that we now have through Jesus Christ. Amen? So that when I said that in the last section of your notes there, when I say compare the context of this passage here that we just read with the remainder of Hebrews 10. So Hebrews 10 talks about what, what was actually going on in real time right here. And the writer of Hebrews, which I think was Paul because of this, another reason, he was, it's, a, it's the same thing. It ex explains it twice. So that will finish up Hebrews chapter 10, just understanding what he's just said right here. So when we, go, uh, when we, re when we report before, uh, remember what we read a couple weeks ago, three, four weeks ago? Uh, there was appointed one, uh, once for a man to die and then the judgment. But it says when we die, we're face to face with the Lord. So we all bring our report cards. I, 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 hey, did you look at my notes? It's, it's gonna, it's, it, when we turn it in, it's going to say Jesus on it. And it's going to say A, 100, A+. Plus. And that's, 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 that's going to be our report card. Amen? Everybody, do I get a good? And that's why Paul said it's the, that's the crown of life. Is that it's, when we say... When we stand before Him, remember the song that we sang, dressed in His righteousness alone. And what does it go on to say? Somebody remember? The, the, next, the next stanza from that. I, I, thoughtless. Faultless. Faultless before His throne. See, we're going to be faultless, not because we don't have faults, because Jesus doesn't. And he's our representative. 100 A plus, just going to say Jesus on our report Amen. card. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Let's take communion together. Oh, Tamisha, I think she is here. The GPT didn't talk about the the never, and that's that's why that's why I use Peter that's why I use First Peter one because he talks about that through his torn flesh. That's the new and living way that we have to approach the throne. Uh, all right, thank you, sir. All right. I hope y'all. I hope y'all are able to, to to join with us in our communion each week. Uh, this this verse. This thought just came to me, and I think that's what we're supposed to share about this. But. Um, You know, he's, Jesus said you're clean because of the word I've spoken to you about what I'm going to do. So they were, he was speaking ahead of time, but he was going to actually do it. But he said, you're clean. Um, and so all they, all they did was, um, and he, he led the way in that, was what? Washed he washed the, the disciples' feet. Uh, because where does, where does the, what happens when our, in those days they wore sandals and they got, what do they get on their feet? Dust, and so in in the in the beginning, when the you know when man fell in the garden, it says that you know that now you're going to have to try to earn and try to do out of the dust of the earth. To dust you came, and to dust you return. That was the curse of being entangled. Remember, even in the in in uh, John chapter 15, where the the vine gets dropped down into the dust. Um, it's all, it was always, it says that, that when we get down in the dust, He lifts us up. Amen. He elevates us. And this is what we're doing with the, with the when, we, when we remember what Jesus did, 
it's actually what he's doing is he's lifting us back up and to remember that we are perfectly clean because of his work on our behalf. And I was thinking about just while, while y'all were passing out the communion, I, I was thinking, you know, I felt like he said, you know, tell him I'm the dust buster. <laughs> I'm the dust buster. Remember that used to be uh, because he wants to bust that dirt, that dust off of us, off of our feet. He wants us to, to, to we know where we stand, but sometimes our standing becomes fog, becomes disrupted by the entanglements in the dust and the world system that we're in. So he wants to remind us that, that he's, this, this, he's, keeping our, he's keeping our walk, he's keeping our, you know, our feet clean, he's, he's, he's continuing and he's asking us to do the same to one another. Confession, uh, saying the same thing that God says about ourselves, this is what we're doing, that we're confessing what God says about us. Our bodies were fixed by His body and our, our spirits were, was, were reborn and cleansed forever by His blood. Amen? So, Lord, we thank You for Your body. We thank You that, that, that Your body um, was made, you said in, in Matthew chapter um, 8, verse 17, that you be, is, He Himself, if y'all listened, listened to Samuel on Wednesday, last Wednesday, his whole message is about Jesus. He himself, what he did himself alone because he's the only one that could. Uh, but he himself took our infirmities and carried our diseases. Now, that's, that's a promise that we have in what he accomplished for us. So what he wants us to do is to receive from his work. Simply receive that he took it. So why would I want to keep it if he took it? So, as we just said, give it up. Let go. Uh, take and receive. He said, take this body. This is my body that was given for you. Take it. Don't just leave it laying there and looking at it. Take it into your body. So, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, we just take this. We receive the benefits of what you did uh, with your body for us. We receive that right now. Uh, by the Spirit of the living God, witnessing in us the truth of that reality. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. By one offering, He has perfected forever. By His, by His blood, he's, he's perfected us forever. And we're so thankful for now that we have this perfect righteousness, perfect cleansing, a new birth, uh, completely restored, completely perfected. And, and Lord, we just thank you for the, the, the terms of the new covenant. It's by your blood that can never be, and I want to quote you, I want to quote your, your apostle, we are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. Promised and preserved forever. Thank you, Lord, for this righteousness. Thank you for this new covenant. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. We, we, we enjoyed having you all this morning. And uh, I see our, our prescription get, get, gets cloudy or dusty. Yes, our, the lens is our prescription. Yeah, what we're seeing through sometimes gets... But the Lord is going to make it keep that... Uh, thank you all for sharing. Uh, Mary's having communion. Thankful, thankful for everybody that's there. And whoever will see this, we just commit you to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.